Hey yo guys, I'm back here to give you my uh, UFC Fight for the Troops review as uh, well as some other stuff. Uh, really to me, uh, this is a busy night. Uh, Thursday is kind of weird that it's a busy night. I mean usually for me, you just got impact. Well tonight also there is uh, other things in the world of combat sports and you know both the other two combat sports mainly with uh, on HDNet you have Pat Militich making his return to the uh, the cage, you know, to return and you know the legend himself returns in Pat Militich as he takes on uh, Thomas Wildman Denny, who you will remember taking on um, Nick Diaz at uh, the second Elite XC uh, CBS Saturday Night Fights. You know, the one that I guess many of you probably didn't watch since they did a terrible job promoting it and they tried to promote it to the hardcore fans, which is never a smart move to do as you know they're gonna watch already um, and also on versus we got uh, some boxing actually we got the IBF Cruiserweight Championship on the line as Steve Cunningham defends up uh, defends his belt up against uh, Thomas Adamek should be a good fight uh, I've heard things that this could be potential like the uh, frock fight that took place uh, over the weekend in England uh, anyway if you get something of that nature it's always good but now let's do my uh, UFC fight for the troops review this took place last night from the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina. Gotta say, it was, you know what, you know what, for the fact that they were fi trying to fight, have these fights to raise money for a hospital, uh, half the fighters on this card are gonna need that hospital because this is one of the most injury-induced uh, fight cards I have seen in a very long time. I mean, I'm no doctor, I mean, I did okay in biology, but I can damn well tell you a lot of these injuries are good. You're going to be out for a very long time. Um, definitely first, we have to make mention of, if you haven't seen it as it was on the undercard, it is on YouTube. Uh, Hattrick Hockey gave me the link to this, uh, Chase. And I'm kind of disappointed I asked for this, as this was one of the most disgusting leg injuries you're going to see um, in the... Uh, Corey Hill, uh, Daryl, Daryl Hart fight, uh, just gross, a frick man, uh, Hart just threw a outside leg kick and the leg just shattered and into like putty, it was disgusting, it, they said it was Sid du Justice, Sid Vicious worthy, to me Sid Knuckles is worse, but the fact that this had to come from a kick, uh, that was pretty gross, it's almost up there with one of the Things on, on that old show, you gotta see this, where two guys threw kicks at the same time, and they're both their legs like broke in half. It was up there with that. It was pretty gross. But anyways, as that was the fight there, basically, um, we got to see. Uh, let's go to the main card first, as you know, I did do predictions. We started with Jim Miller versus Matt Wyman. To me, um, since Miller absolutely dominated Wyman, I mean, both men were out there, you know, actually throwing, uh, trying to make this very interesting fight. The first round was fantastic. I thought, you know, both guys were out there trying to, you know, impose their will and do the right thing. But Miller just had, you know, better striking and better control on the ground. As, you know, he is pre- as I said in my predictions, the man has been UFC lightweight ready for year. He just didn't get enough TV exposure due to the fact he fought on the IFL, which is on HDNet. Doesn't get that in that many homes. Um, yeah, that's what he did here. Um, he beat up the former uh, Ultimate Fighter veteran, Wyman. I mean, he basically dominated him the whole round. To me, he absolutely dominated him so much in the uh, first round of that fight. I had to make it a 10-8. I scored it like one of the judges did 30-26. Uh, first time in hear me actually scored as I like to leave those in the description, but he absolutely dominated him. Wyman could do nothing in there. Um, you know, Wyman tried to make it interesting at least in the first round, but really after a while, Miller's just came out there, unloaded on him, you know, great strikes and more better on the ground. Um, for some reason, Wyman wanted to keep it there when he was getting beat up. I don't understand that. And Miller wins the unanimous decision. Then we went to the next fight, which is Tim Cruder versus uh, Long Grand. Really, this fight... It was a pretty good fight. Um, I was, you know, expecting kind of what we got is, you know, both guys are so skilled on the ground that they didn't want to take it there, which always makes for an entertaining fight as, um, I believe, then you had a Cruder in the, at the end of the first round, was it the end of the first or the second? I believe it was, yeah, it was the end of the second round, uh, threw a nice kick to the side into the rib cage area of, uh, Ligorian and, you know, break his rib and that made a verbal stoppage there. 
interesting way. I mean, at least, you know, uh, Logran didn't come out after that, you know, and risk further injury, and he just said, I better stop this or, you know, I won't go anywhere. And he also, the fact that, you know, he was getting dominated as well, um, he, was, he, he could do nothing mu much there against uh, Tim Kruder. Uh, Tim Kruder gets the victory and should improve his, himself to maybe making some more TV appearances. Then we go to the next fight, which was Steve Cantwell versus Razik Al Hussein. Man, this was a real interesting fight. Uh, Cantwell, we all know the former WBC, the final WBC light uh, heavyweight champion up against, you know, this undefeated newcomer to the UFC. Both made their UFC debuts, but this was uh, Al Hussein's Z debut, as I should put it. You know what? Um, Hussein had this 80-inch reach advantage, like, his, he had an 80-inch reach and he used it pretty well. I thought for a while, for the opening moments of the first round, he was up there uh, and actually doing pretty well on the standing aspect as I didn't, I felt he shouldn't try and stand with Steve Cantwell as Cantwell will beat you up in there. He did a pretty good job, but you know, disappointing to the level of what I thought he would do. But when it was the ground, um, I was very surprised at how well Steve Cantwell is. Steve Cantwell is becoming a very good mixed martial artist all around. As you know, as I said, he beat Brian Stom with great Muay Thai, and he has good, great striking as it is. And now he's picking up a submission game. As I thought, Hal Hussein, you know, he's good on the ground, and well, he got caught into this arm bar. And I thought, you know, Hussein, it, he Cal had this arm bar in pretty tight, but no, uh, Hussein decides he's gonna roll out. And he's he is rolling out, and I think maybe he can get out and slip it up. Now Cal has this death lock, and. Just absolutely hyper extends the elbow there of uh, Al Hussein, and it was a gruesome pop. I mean, Mario Yamasaki, who I believe is the second best, one of the best of mixed martial arts officials there is, had to stop. He's like, no, this thing not go on anymore. I mean, it popped right in front of him. I mean, Christ, I could have had made, told you to stop that. I'm surprised that Yamasaki maybe didn't realize that since Al Hussein wasn't going to tap that. Uh, when Cantwell had it, you know, even when he was on the back there and didn't have to rely on the breaking there um, after the roll through, that he didn't stop it in that situation. I would have more or less maybe there since, you know, I was saying wasn't going to tap and, you know, for his safety and to prevent what happened to his arm, I would have probably stopped it there. You know, uh, Yamasaki, I mean, it's a tough job being an official in an MMA and, you know, in any combat sport, really, it's a tough job. Uh, I mean, that was a tough call, as I said. I mean, you know, he wasn't going to tap. He could have stood up and with it. He could have maybe got out of it. He, if he'd rolled through and got up, hey, we know who knows. But whatever. Mario Misaki wasn't like the official in the uh, Steve Bruno uh, fight. who was awful. Um, but, yeah, that was just ugh, ugly to see the arm pop. And Cam Wilson said in his interview after, yeah, he's always wanted to do that. So, yeah, at least he gets to do something. And hopefully Cantwell, you know, he's going to need to obviously win a lot more fights because he's now in the toughest division in the UFC. I mean, one of the most packed divisions that the UFC has, so we'll see where we go there. Um, then we went to the next fight, fight which was uh, Mike Quickswick versus Jonathan Goulet, and boy did Mike Quickswick remind us why his nickname is Quick, as he disposed of the Road Warrior in 33 seconds, as he got to show himself back to be in the form he was in when he was at middleweight, as I said he would do in predictions. Goulet cannot fight up against these top tier opponents. He can, you know, claim that he was going to, but, you know, he couldn't as he got knocked out 33 seconds in. Once again, another tough call as, you know, Goulet was out on, like, the third punch that, uh, uh, Swift, and he was just down. I mean, he was out there kind of convulting a bit. Uh, it was pretty gr un unfortunate to watch there, but Swift gets the victory, and we get to see the old Mike Swift of, as, of, as I said we would. And it's good to see that because I like that Mike Swick is a very entertaining fighter and, you know, it's good to see him healthy and hopefully he can get his career going there. Continue to move it up and maybe even, you know, find himself in a welterweight title shot. Um, but that's where I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking maybe in a few more fights he will, but we'll see where we go from there. Then we go to the next fight, which was the main event. Another welterweight bout is Josh Koscheck took on Yushioka Yoshida. And boy, did Josh Koscheck rock this motherfucker. I mean, Yoshida was down. You could have counted to 59, and he wouldn't have got up. I mean, it was this was such a severe knockout. That when Koscheck was doing his interview, uh, and, you know, the whole time, normally you get a guy who gets, you know, rocked pretty good. You know, he's up and out of there. He's still on his back. I mean, we had to see the Steve Bruno fight uh, 
really, I mean, we had to see the whole two, two round and a half, well, the full first round and, you know, the part way through the second round fight. And, you know, that's when uh, Yoshida got out of there. Yoshida suffered a concussion. Pretty sure Goulet suffered something of a nature. Um, and, you know, a s disgusting leg injury there. Uh, and a broken arm. We really do need a hospital built for these fighters. Uh, it was pretty gruesome there, but, hey, Koscheck, you know, he has completely evolved, as, you know, they kept mentioning in the commentary, which is true. I mean, he was just a wrestler, you know, who liked to just take you down and score points. Well, now he's learning, you know, the, the submission game, and he's got some up, and he makes for a very interesting opponent. I don't know if they're going to have a Mike Swick-Josh Koscheck fight. I think it will be interesting, but obviously, maybe since they train at the same place, I don't think it will happen, but... It would be a very interesting fight, but I don't know. Uh, this may be Koscheck's last fight as he doesn't want to sign that ridiculous deal that Dana White wants to have, you know, the li your name rights for the rest of your life, which I'm with Koscheck. I wouldn't sign that for anything, but that's just thoughts on that. But overall, this show, the fights were good. At least we had good finishes. I mean, that's a complaint on some shows that we don't get finishes and they all go to the scorecards. Tough thing there. We had finishes. My problem with this show is I understand you're trying to raise money for the troops, but you didn't need to overkill it with these little vignette-type things. I mean, by the third one, I didn't want to give you my money. You overkilled it. Yeah, I may live in another country, but someone tuning in for the first time is now just like, okay, this now feels like I'm watching frickin' PBS. I don't have to give you my money. You overkilled it. We didn't need to see these third-rate actors. I mean, with the time... I saw Matt LeBlanc on there. I decided there's no way this thing deserves my money. Honest to God, Joey from Friends? What the hell has he done since Friends? Joey? That show sucked. And the movie bef before Friends? That was a piece of crap. He is not that great of an actor. He can just play Joey. But anyways, I mean, they just completely overkilled it to the point that you didn't even wa like want to give the money. That's how I felt. Um, and the thing that I didn't like about it is... This is the main thing if you're tuning into the first time for a UFC event. Normally, show the hype video, which I think is a great thing that they have to actually show interesting, you know, the fights that are, even aren't the main event or even on the undercard. They show these hype videos, and you're like, okay, let's get to the entrance, and then we'll have the fight. No, we went to commercial to avoid the entrances. Yeah, we got them for uh, Yoshida versus Koscheck, but... Why didn't we have them all the way through the show? That takes something away from the viewer sitting at home. I mean, we didn't have to... Uh, we didn't get to see, you know, what makes it feel like to be there. We had to go through commercial. I mean, Spike will absolutely overkill a UFC event with commercials. I've seen UFC... I saw UFC 89 on Rogers Sportsnet, and they did a fantastic job. No overkills. The only thing I don't like about... Uh, mixed martial arts being aired in this country is between rounds, they'll air a commercial. I like to know what's going on in the corner and feel, you know, good about myself. Show boxing from HBO or uh, Showtime, we gotta go to commercial. I just hate that. I mean, that's a CRTC thing. I don't have a control over that. But still, Spike just overkills this thing with commercials on, you know, crap that they have to plug. I mean, I understand the Bud Light commercials, but did we need 90 of them? Really? Did we need 90 Bud Light commercials? It was just out of this world, uh, mar like marketable, uh, I think of the word that, product placement 101. I mean, hell, that's what, you know, I mean, I understand that there's supposed to be some sponsors in there, but Christ, let's not overkill everything. That's what I felt there. Um, really, want to just say one thing. I've got some good questions. I may answer them. If I could get some more, uh, I will post the questions from these people who I have sent them. I won't put their names just to overhype them or whatnot, you know, I mean, I've, I've sent messages personally saying they did a good job, and I'll send you the types of stuff that I like. I just got, like, a bunch of five that I like. If you can keep sending them that way, that'd be great. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Well, the Joey Styles story that I mentioned, it's unfortunately not as cool as we thought, where, you know, JBL was full charge coming, and Joey just, you know, that uh, storybook kid, <laughs> nerd just punch and just knocks JBL down. Well, we didn't get anything of that nature, but it was basically, they were trying to pull JBL back from, you know, harassing Styles more, and Joey just cold cocked him, and to me, uh, as I didn't really get to go in that in-depth about it, this couldn't have happened to a better person. I mean, JBL, I like JBL, he's, you know, 
okay in the ring. Um, definitely since, you know, he took the time off to be an announcer. You know, it hasn't been the best. He's at least trying to lose weight, and you can tell he's lost a bit of weight since uh, his original return by, or back late last year or early, earlier this year, I should say, early early Janu uh, early 2008. Um, he's at least trying there. But, I mean, to me, this couldn't happen to a better guy. Jay Bell is one of the biggest bullies, and to me, you don't, you're don't. you grown men. You don't need to be bullying each other. I understand, you know, some international hazing, but why are you trying to haze Joey, who's been in this business for a very long time? Um, he is wrestler uh, of that nature and what's he ever done to you just because he worked in ECW and you know was the next great content that this company thought but they decided no Joey you got to be like Jim Ross the guy they fired which baffles my mind um but yeah I mean I mean after all JBL has done so many terrible things to people I mean if you remember the beat down he put on the blue meanie at the end of the one night stand in 2005 and he Hazed the crap out of uh, Palmer Cannon, who was the you know uh, CW executive on SmackDown, who would always come. But he just hazed the crap out of him. That Palmer had to leave the business. Um, I believe JBL was a big factor in uh, the Dykes, the, not the Dykes, the Dicks, uh, having to leave. Uh, when one of them was Tank Tolan, then you know he's now in Ring of Honor. But still, I mean, the hazing there is unnecessary. I mean, they can go too far and you know ruin people. Um, if you've seen in any sport, in hockey, you know, football, basketball, um, we don't need to have, have hazing that much. I mean, even in your high school, you've seen, you know, when you enter a high school or enter a college, the hazing, some of it's in fun game, or hell, even look on the Ultimate Fighter, some of it, like, that was in fun game. I mean, you didn't try to hurt anyone personally, but j Bill likes to hurt you personally, and that doesn't go anywhere. Um... Also, want to make mention of uh, the fact that uh, the UFC re-signed uh, Roger Huerta, which to me is a good thing because one, you get to draw in a whole new audience. Because if you haven't really noticed, uh, UFC audience is mainly a white-dominated crowd, and Huerta, being you know of Mexican descent, he can draw those types of people in, which is a good thing because I think the UFC needs to be you know more ethnicized. Uh, not taking a quick shot at you know, us white people, still uh, we can't be the only ones there. Uh, and, you know, he's an exciting fighter, and I think he's going to add, you know, a lot to the, you know, fight game. Uh, I think he's he's just a very exciting fighter. And, but to me, but the thing that was interesting is the fact that he didn't care if he resigned or not a couple months ago, back before his fight with uh, Kenny Florian at uh, UFC 87. So, I mean, I I guess, he you know, he decides whatever. I may as well. It's tough economic times. You may as well. Uh... What else do I want to make mention of? Uh, congratulations to not only the UFC for doing a million ten buy rates for Lesnar Couture UFC 91. Didn't think that would happen, but hey, you know, a lot of sports bars must have picked up on it that never carried it before. I mean, this is obviously the most watched fight now in mixed martial arts history. Uh, as I probably predicted it would be because, you know, this thing got pretty good hype on uh, ESPN. I mean, they didn't do the best job in promoting it on, on the network that they have to promote themselves. I mean, they probably, if they did a 24-7, they could have maybe been up there with the number I'm about to say in a De La Hoya Pacquiao, which was like a million twenty-five. Uh, that's a big number. And, you know, to me, in these economic times, I didn't think, you know, it would be that great. I didn't think both would, you know, get over a million. I mean, let's give them props there, especially De La Hoya Pacquiao with the fact that, you know, Boxing's not that hot. I mean, they come off a 24-7 with uh, Jones Calzaghe, and they, their buy rate is very disappointing. Uh, I believe it was only like 580000 or something like that, but they weren't happy with it, and nor should they be. I mean, they put a lot of effort in that fight, and it, it was an entertaining fight, as, you know, uh, most boxing main events are. But, you know, this with Cal, uh, De La Hoya Pacquiao, I was really just shocked at this. Uh, you had the biggest draw in pay-per-view, but, you know... Roy, to me, is just, you know, I guess a little more entertaining. But, you know, Pacquiao, uh, not Pacquiao, De La Hoya covers a whole streams of audiences. So I guess that's good. And, you know, they hyped it up really well. And, I mean, people, I guess, cared because it's the biggest draw pay-per-view in De La Hoya. And I guess that's where we go from there. I want to make a quick mention. If you haven't seen the New Japan Dome Show card, wow, that thing looks um, I'll probably go in depth about it in another video, as you're probably going to see a lot of me, as Saturday we have the insanity of more UFC on Spike with the uh, tough finals, you gotta, you're going to get my predictions. Please keep sending in the questions, and uh, I'll probably do some of them at the end of that video, but we'll see where I go, it depends how I feel. Anyways, that's it for me, I'm out. Peace.